Hello, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. A couple of weeks back I released a video reviewing the new Nick Collection 2018 which was released by DxO. A lot of people commented on that video saying that the option to use the Nick Collection as a standalone editor had been removed by DxO and for that reason they weren't going to be upgrading. At the time, I checked my installation, I couldn't find any of the executable files, and I decided they were right. But I've now realised I was wrong. You can use the new Nick DxO Collection 2018 as a standalone image editor. In this short video, I'm going to explain how to do this, and I'm going to explain why I made that mistake. Let's start by looking at what happens when you install the Nick Collection. Here's one of the first screens that you see. It actually shows you where the NIT collection executables are going to be installed onto your hard drive. What I'd forgotten is that I'd actually changed this location during the installation. It was only when I actually came to review the screen recording I made, it was only then that I realized I'd actually installed the NIT collection onto my K drive and not my C drive. If you're going to run Nick as a standalone image editor, you need to know the location you've installed these executable files to. After the installation location, the next screen you see is this one. And this often causes a lot of confusion. This is the one where the plugin files are going to be installed. So these are the files that are being used by host applications like Photoshop and Affinity Photo. These are not the same as image editing applications. You can't run them standalone. So now that I know that the application files are actually on my K drive, I can open them in the file browser. So here you can see the new DxO folder that's being created. And in there you've got the Nick collection folder. If I go into that, you can see a new folder for each of the plugins or the applications. And if we go into the Viveza one, you can see there Viveza 2 64 bit. And here we've got the Viveza 2 application. Now because these are application files, you can actually double click to launch them. So the next question is, how do you open an image file in an application that doesn't have any menu options? So you could try to drag and drop it. So I've got some image files here. Let's pick up this Higator image. If we try to drag and drop onto the Viveza 2, it doesn't recognize it as a file that it can open and it just doesn't do anything with it. The right way to do this is, let's close this application. The right way to do this is to take the Higator file or your image file, it's a JPEG, and I can drag it over and I can actually drop it onto the file which is the Viveza 2 application file. Now when I do that, the file is actually opened and you can now make editing changes to the file. When you're finished editing, you just click the save button and that's it. The changes have made have now been written back into the file that we were editing and the, the editor is actually closed. So you need to be careful with this. There's no warning that this is going to happen and there's no way back. That file has now been updated. Now you can use this method with both JPEG and TIFF files. If you try it with a different type of file, one that the applications don't recognize, so let's use this PSD Photoshop file. If I try to open that on the Viveza 2, let's see what happens. Okay, so we actually get a warning that the file format's not supported. Now let's take a look at what happens if you try to edit a RAW file. I've got a file here from a Nikon D800, which is in the RAW format. Let's drag and drop that. So it looks like the RAW file can be edited, but actually what's happening here is it's not actually editing the RAW file, it's reading the embedded JPEG image out of the RAW file. I'll show you what happens if we make some adjustments. When we try to save this back, it will try to write the information back to the RAW file, but then it will fail and report an error. So that's how you can edit JPEGs and TIFFs in the uh, different applications. If you want to make it easy for yourself, what I suggest you do is create a shortcut. And once you've created the shortcut, you can move that then onto your desktop. And then using that, you can actually do the same method, dropping files onto the shortcut that's on your desktop. 
So this makes it really easy to drag and drop images onto whichever of the applications that you want to use and the image then just opens in that application for editing. I hope you found this useful. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft. If you enjoyed this, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with others. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.